Hello, friends, and welcome to our online gathering here at Fernand for Methodist Church. My name is Scott Gentry. I'm the senior pastor. It's a joy to be with you again today. So, hey, first of all, let me give greetings to all of you who are a regular part of this online worship gathering. It's so good to be with you. I'm so glad that this is a part of, uh, of your life. I hope it's a part of your weekly worship. Uh, I hear from people all the time. I mean, literally, uh, it seems like every week we hear from someone that will just say, this service is meaningful. That for some of you, we realize that uh, you can't join us in the room on our campus for live worship. Uh, for some, it's it's just maybe you're just you know not able to be out for live worship for a little you know short period of time, and you're joining online. For some of you, you're not even around uh, the Ferndale, Michigan area where our campus is located. You're in different city states, and literally, we have people that we hear that are in different countries who are a part of this service. So I just say thank you. We're glad that you're with us today. And I, I just want you to know, we give such prayerful preparation for this online service. Uh, we, we want this to be a meaningful time that when you come together, uh, when we come together, that we're worshiping God together. We're not just watching a video. We're not just preparing a video. But this is a time that says, let's let's all draw in to worship God, give him our thanks, our praise. Uh, and we want you to participate with that and, and to respond to God as he speaks to you. So I, that's my prayer for you today. Hey, if you're with us for the first time today, a special greeting to you. Thank you for, for being here. The service lasts just about an hour. We fill it with all kinds of things that we think will be helpful for you as you grow in your Christian life, as you explore your Christian faith. Uh, to be able to say wherever I am on my journey with God, God, you know, you're speaking to my heart and uh, giving you an opportunity to, again, respond back to him. So thank you for being here. I, I pray the service is really meaningful to you. Listen, I would love to know who you are and where you're from. That goes to all of you. Uh, you know, we would love to be able to have you either, uh, you know, use the, the link that comes up in our chat bar there on the right side of the screen, it takes you to our connection card. If not, we're putting our QR code on the screen right now. There it is. And that's the same, the link to the same connection card. Just let us know who you are, where you are, you know, uh, joining us from today. And then any ways that we can serve you, you know, prayer requests. We would love to be able to get prayer requests from you. Let us know what's going on in your life. Any updates you want to share. We would love to be able to hear from you. So do that now. We'll also put these links up at the end of our service. So, uh, but we would really count it a, a true treasure to be able to hear from you today. You know, when we come to worship, we worship uh, an amazing God, a God who is our loving Father, uh, Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, our friend. And then specifically today, we're putting a little bit more emphasis on the Holy Spirit, you know, comforter, guide, counselor, the one who empowers us to live. And so I hope that you're ready to worship God, to celebrate the reality of, uh, of your faith, if you're a Christian, if you're exploring the, the Christian faith, that God will make himself known and real to you. It's all based upon the, his promises fulfilled, uh, lived out in us, uh, the, the reality of Jesus our Savior, the reality of the Holy Spirit with us. So that's, that's what we're here for today. You know, God is always at work, uh, and he will be working during this time. So my prayer is that each of us will say, God, work in my heart, work in my life, however you choose. Uh, do in me what you want uh, during this time. So let's do that. Let's pray together and ask God that before we enter into our worship time. Let's pray together. God, thank you for this time to gather uh, as a worshiping community online. Uh, Lord, for, for those that are with us today, wherever they find themselves, in their living room, you know, in their home, their apartment, their condo, uh, they may be in a coffee shop. They may, they, who knows where uh, the different people are today joining with us. You are there, Lord. That's the, the bottom line reality. You are there. And I pray every one of us right now are saying, God, help me to worship you. Help me to know the reality of your presence. Help me to have my faith strengthened today. And God, I'm saying, if there's anything you want to speak to my heart, anything you want to speak to me personally about today, anything you're calling me to respond to you, God, I'm, I'm ready. I'm eager for that. But I've come to worship you, and I start off just by saying, thank you, God. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this service. Thank you for your blessings in my life. Thank you for Jesus, my Savior. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being available to me to help me as I walk through life. And I come to give you my praise and my worship. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, our loving Savior. Amen. So join with me now as we begin our first song of worship, Living Hope. between us how 
high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Saw through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living hope Who could imagine so great a mercy What heart could fathom such boundless grace The God of ages stepped down from has spoken I am forgiven the King of Kings calls me his own beautiful Savior I'm yours forever Jesus Christ my living hope
working in this place I worship you I worship you You are here Moving in our midst I worship you I worship you You are here Working in Darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are we make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yes, it is, yeah, to you are we make Let's sing this together, even when I don't see it. Come on, even when. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Come on! Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop.
Good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday. My name is Sherry, and I am part of our guest services team here at Ferndale Free Methodist Church. It is such an honor to worship with you on this beautiful Sunday morning. Listen, if you're a first-time guest with us, we want you to know we are so happy to have you here worshiping with us. And because of that, we would love to just be able to connect with you. So we are going to put up our digital connection card right now in the comments section of the chat and throughout today's online service. And we would love to have you fill that out. Um, we promise we won't indate you with a whole bunch of emails, but we would just love to come alongside of you in your faith and encourage you and then also be praying for you. You know, here at Ferndale Free Methodist Church, we exist to connect, to grow, and serve. And that means to connect with Christ, to grow in our faith, and to serve others in Jesus' name. So one way for you to be able to serve is by donating to our food pantry. So for the month of February, we are asking for donations of breakfast cereal, any brands or any varieties, of course. You can also um, donate uh, monetary donations uh, via our website at ferndalefmc.com. You can click right on the donate tab and then there's a food pantry tab and you can donate right there. Um, also, we have a couple other exciting things going on in February. Um, first, um, as a church, we are reading the Book of Acts, and we would love to have you join us in that. Um, we know that February has already started, but that's okay. Join us in reading the, the Word of God through the Book of Acts. And then tonight, we are having our Super Bowl party. It is at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Come on out and um, enjoy some snacks and some football and some really good fellowship with us. You know, you guys, I just want you to be so encouraged. Um, I'm not sure if you've ever heard Pastor Scott tell, um, and he's done it through in many of his sermons, about the 1970 Asbury University revival. It was just this beautiful outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And you know what? It is happening again right now. And I really want you to be encouraged by this, you guys. I want you to go to Google and search um, Asbury University Revival, and you will see there's just some really beautiful um, articles and videos of all the things that are going on there right now. And you know what? The Holy Spirit is really moving in a beautiful, big, powerful way. And you know what? If He's moving there, He's moving here. So be encouraged, you guys. Have a beautiful and blessed week. And now let us continue to worship. Well, good morning, church. My name is Pastor Bryce, and I'm the youth pastor here at Ferndale Free Methodist Church. And I want to talk to us about three invitations that Jesus gives to us in the New Testament. And the, the first invitation that he gives to us is to come and rest which is something that, as Americans, we don't do a whole lot of. It's always go, 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 go. But in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You know, for us, we... It is, it is hard for us to slow down. You know, even for me, I've got things that I do on Monday nights and Tuesday nights and Wednesday nights and sometimes Thursday nights and sometimes Friday nights. And then 
Saturday day and Sunday. I'm doing something almost every day of the week. I'm always go, 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 go. And that can be hard, right? It can be, it can be hard and we don't, we don't get our rest in. But Jesus says, hey, come to me. And it's not just a, a physically, I'm tired, right? It's a, it's a mentally, I'm tired too. You know, today in America, we are more stressed than we've ever been. There is just a lot that goes on in our world, in our, in our every day. You know, I remember when I was in high school, I thought, wow, this is incredibly stressful. And I was, was really good at school. I, I didn't, it didn't take me a whole lot of work. And then I got to college and I said, wow, this is really stressful. This is a lot more work. And I had to do a lot of work. And then now as an adult, I say, wow, this is really stressful because now I have to do adulting. And who likes adulting? Nobody. And it's just all this stress that we have to be the best that we can, to do the best that we can. But Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And we get to rest and find peace in the presence of God from the stress of life which is just an absolutely wonderful thing that we get to come to Jesus and say, take this, take this. I'm weary and I'm burdened and I want you to give me rest. I I pray that you all accept that invitation. The second invitation is to discipleship. In Mark 1, 17, Jesus says, come follow me and I will send you out to fish for people. Now, I am not a fisherman. I'm, I, I just am not that kind of guy. I have no prior experience. I've got no skill. But if I were to really set my heart to it, if I were to really say, hey, this is what I want to be a good fisherman, I would, I would find somebody who knows what they're talking about and say, hey, can you teach me everything you know about fishing? And this is fishing for fish. Jesus is going to teach us to fish for people. You know, obviously I haven't sought anyone out to teach me about fishing because I'm not good at it, right? But in other other things of life to say, hey, professor, I don't understand this topic. Can you, can you help me do this? And then to be able for me to go around and say, hey, you took this class the year after I took it. I can help you because I remember what my professor taught me and, and, and explained to me with this. You know, we get to, we get to come and, and be disciples of Jesus. Jesus is, has perfect knowledge of how to fish for people. And we get to, we get to sit and, and follow him. A disciple is a, is a student, somebody who, who follows closely somebody. And we get to, to learn and follow closely what Jesus does and, and says and try to emulate Jesus. And this last invitation that I want to talk about is the invitation to, to abide. Um, John 15, 4, the version I'm going to read is not going to say abide, but in other versions it does say abide. So John 15, 4 says, Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So like I said, we're this invitation to abide, or in this version, remain. And in different versions, they say different things. But in one version... Um, as I was reading through the different versions of this verse, one of them said, live in, live in me as I also live in you. And I loved that. That, that tells us, hey, this, this remaining, this abiding is really, we get to live in the presence of God. You know, all of these invitations I think are, are connected. We get to live in the rest and live in the, the learning that we get from Jesus, the, the discipleship that we're getting from Jesus. We get to just live in that. We, we want to live in Jesus. To, it's, it's incredible. When I was in college, I went to Spring Arbor, and I'm talking a lot about college, but it's a great, it was great for me. It taught me a lot of this. Um, I got to live on campus, live in the community of Spring Arbor. And that changed my perspective on how my college was. If I didn't live in the the community of Spring Arbor, if I was off campus, my college experience would have probably been worse. Right? I, I wouldn't have 
had the same benefits as if I had lived on, which I did. And that's Jesus saying, hey, remain in me, live in me, abide in me, stay connected to the vine, and we will bear fruit. We will bear fruit that comes from following and and being disciples of Jesus. All of these invitations are are individual invitations, but they are invitations that we can accept together because they go together. And so church, I I pray that as we continue through Sunday services, as you continue through your day, I, I pray that you accept each and every one of these invitations as individual invitations, but also as invitations in a group collectively that, that we rest, that we are, are disciples of Jesus and we disciple others and that we abide, remain and live in the wondrous things that Jesus Christ is. Good morning and happy Sunday. Today we're talking about nutrition. Nutrition? Why are we talking about nutrition? We're at church, not at, I don't know, a health food place. Well, because there's an important, nutrition is important and the proper intake of the right nutrients is important. You've heard the phrase breakfast of champions, right? This is literally Simone Biles on a box of Wheaties. When we take in too much of things that are not good for us, sugar, uh, fried foods, like too much of those things, they probably take a toll on your body. Proper nutrition is important to live a healthy lifestyle, right? And um, the same is true of spiritual nutrition. Without sufficient and regular nutrition, our inner life begins to suffer the consequences. Our souls need to be fed as well. Our bodies need to be fed. Our souls need to be fed. You can't just eat breakfast once a week and that's the only thing you eat and you would be full and fueled for the week, right? The same is true in our spiritual lives. Some people think that they can come to church on Sunday and they're here for an hour and a half and they get everything that they need to fuel them for the entire week. That's just not true. Your body will not be spiritually nurtured in the way that it needs to be. So there's three things to help you be spiritually nurtured in the best way possible to keep you fueled for the entire week. But it requires work every single day. The first is to be fueled by the word of God, a regular diet of God's word. Uh, Take it, eat of it, to read the scriptures daily. Second is to pray regularly. We need to have prayer lives that are communing with God and um, asking God for what we need, but also taking time to just praise and we need that daily in our lives. And the third is to take the third is to take time to be still, to meditate on God's word, to meditate on those prayers. And um, with those three things and you combine them, but they require work every single day, you'll have a balanced spiritual diet ready to take on the world. Hey friends, thank you for letting me have the next few minutes to share a message with you. This is the third part of a four-part series we've been looking at, talking about overcoming temptation. And we know it's true, nobody has to tell us, we all face temptation. Uh, And we may face a recurring temptation, an area in our life where it seems like we're weak, seems like we stumble and fall, and, and many of us are saying, you know, I really do wish that I would have some victory there. I mean, the reality is when sin comes along, sometimes we do give in to temptation. Sometimes we sin because we like it. There's, you know, we think that there's you know, some joy, some pleasure, some adventure, something in it. But what we see in Scripture, what we've been talking about, is sin always has a consequence. And the, res- the result of sin is always it brings death in some form. It could be you know, the death of a relationship, a reputation, a family, a job, uh, your finances. There are all kinds of things where uh, sin can, the consequences can be really played out. And, and it's those times when we say, you know, God, I just really wish that I could stop. I really do want to have victory over this. And I don't know about you. There have been times in my life, and maybe you've experienced something like this, when you say, I prayed about it, and maybe it seems like nothing seems to help. I just keep falling into those same traps. You know, I've done everything I can. And sometimes we even feel like we just say, you know, I just can't quit. Let me remind you of a key verse that we looked at as we launched into this series. It comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Here's what the Bible tells us. God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. 
So God is what? God is faithful, right? And he'll show us a way out, right? He says, I'm going to let you know when that temptation comes, you don't have to give in to it. You don't, you don't have to yield to it. And so we're going to say, yes, God, uh, I know that you're going to provide an answer for me so I can endure it, so I can get through this. And my prayer today is that we wouldn't just do this on a, you know, over and over again basis, but God really would do kind of a deep work in us where we have some, some victory, some lasting victory in this area. So I want you to be encouraged with this truth. You know, no matter what you're facing, there is always a way out. Um, you may be tempted to complain, to compare, tempted to envy other people, tempted to overspend. You may be addicted to social media, gambling, gaming, looking at stuff that's inappropriate, but whatever it is, God is always faithful and he won't let you be tempted beyond what you can endure. He will always be there to help you. So maybe you've done something like this. I have. When a temptation comes, something gets in my thoughts, I say, I need to quit thinking about that. But when I do that, all that makes me do is think about it even more. It's like if I go to the freezer, if I'm saying I don't want to eat ice cream, but I say, okay, I, I need to stop thinking about ice cream, then all I do is think about ice cream. I just want it even more and more. So when we tell ourselves, don't think about the thing that's caused me to stumble, that's just exactly where our minds go. So today what I want us to do is to learn from scripture a better plan, not that I'm not going to think about this wrong thing, but actually I want to do the right thing because God wants to, in this way out, he wants to provide a, a different way for us to address that when those temptations come. So we're going to put on our thinking hats today. We're going to look at some scriptures and see if we can get some help from this. Galatians 5, 16 says this. So I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So what does that mean? Well, it means for us to stay close to God. I mean, to do the right thing is to say, I want to walk by the Spirit. I want to do the things that I know that please God. And we do that when we walk by the Spirit. It's not just doing the things that please God. It's doing it with God's power. And we're going to see that when we do that, it says you won't gratify, you won't give in to these desires of the flesh when these temptations come. Now, the Bible uses that phrase, kind of the desires of the flesh. What is that? Well, it's, it's a picture of the sinful nature. If you're a follower of Jesus, you know that we live with this ongoing battle of what God wants for us, uh, God, what God wants us to do. But then there's this internal battle that goes on, the sinful nature that's in us that says, no, I want to do other things, the things that, you know, that please me or feed my flesh, but clearly they're not pleasing to God. So let's be honest for a moment, you know. Just think through your past week. How many of you live with that kind of internal conflict going on in your life this week? That there was something that you were tempted to do, some thought, something you really were drawn to, you wanted to do, but there was this struggle because you knew it wasn't the right thing to do. I mean, I did this week. Those thoughts, those things would come in and then God would check that. His spirit would check that. And so quickly I could say, you know, God, I don't want to do those things. With the help of your spirit, I don't want to do those things. And so God's promise is if we walk by the spirit, the Holy Spirit, then we won't give in to those, those inclinations, those temptations that come our way. Now, friends, just to let you know, this is a very big struggle. This is a real thing. And you probably face something like this. Maybe recently, certainly in your life, you face this. You know, a thought enters your mind, right? This is where it all begins here. Uh, and you go through a process, a quick thing like this. Like, I really want this. I really want to do this. You know, I, I really want to experience this. But I know that God doesn't want me to do this. It's a quick check that goes on there. And you may be even through this week, if you've been with us through this series, you have said, you know, I made a promise to God. I, I am not going to do these kind of things again. No more, never again. But in cyber saying, but I really want to. I, it's, it is a real struggle. It's a really big deal, okay? So that's, that's something we are all living with. So the answer to this the way to win the battle is to walk in the spirit. Galatians 5.17 says, For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They're in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. Another chapter in the Bible that really speaks about this is Romans chapter 7. The Apostle Paul talks about his struggle, which is our struggle that we go through, and just this, this tension back and forth. In Romans chapter 7, verse 15, he wrote, I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what's right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. 
I mean, do you kind of resonate with the Apostle Paul? You know, you, I mean, you could say, look, I want to read my Bible, but I don't. You know, I don't want to overspend, but I do. Uh, I don't want to be critical of other people, you know, but I keep on doing it. And it just goes on and on. We all have those different things, you know. I don't, I don't want to look at inappropriate stuff. I don't want to look at porn on my phone or my tablet, my computer, but I still do. I don't want to be deceptive, but I still tell lies. Uh, I don't want to sleep with my boyfriend, but I know I still want to. Those are the kind of struggles that we live with on a consistent basis. And what you're saying with the Apostle Paul is, I want to do what's right, but I tend to lean to do what's wrong. So why is this such a struggle? Well, here's a key thought, and this is, you've probably heard this, it's out in all kinds of secular things and, and stuff, but it's, it's, a, it's a key thought and it works for us today too. What you feed grows and what you starve dies. I mean, it's just a practical way to think about it. Whatever you feed grows and whatever you neglect, whatever you starve, it just gets weaker and dies. You know, for example, you think about it like a house plant. Let's just use a plant. If you feed a house plant, you give it what it needs, water, you know, if you put some every now and then some, some uh, nutrients in the soil and stuff, like that. but if you feed it, it's got the, the right light and everything, it's going to grow. But if you neglect it, right, if you don't give into it, eventually it dies. And, you know, if you're like me, sometimes with plants, you can say it looks so good and then it died. Well, in, your, in the case of your sin nature, that's what we want. It's like, look, we don't want to keep giving into it. We don't want to keep feeding it. Instead, we want to, to starve it. We want to, to say, I'm not going to give in to the, the demands that, that you're kind of making of me. And so starve it, it will get weaker, and it will die with the help of the Spirit. Now, with your, your, uh, your spiritual side, it's the, the thing we want. If you feed it, it grows stronger. Take intimacy with God. You spend time with God. You spend time in His Word. You spend time you know, saying, Lord, just instruct me. As, as we do that, you know, intimacy, intimacy with God grows. And we do have the power then to overcome temptation, the power to live a life that is pleasing to God. And Jesus talks about it as the abundant life there. What you feed grows. What you starve dies. So instead of thinking about, you know, that thing, Lord, I should be thinking about this, but I'm thinking about it. So instead of saying, I'm not going to think about it, let's flip that script a little bit and say, God, the way to have victory in this struggle is to feed my spirit, to, to feed myself with the things that are going to be good for me. They're going to be honoring to God and the things that will give me strength. Now, we're going to talk a lot about that next week, so I hope you'll be back with us next week. But let's continue on. So here's a, a question to consider. How do we, with the help of the Holy Spirit, overcome wrong desires? Because that's what we're looking for, right? How do we, with the help of God, overcome these wrong desires? How can the Holy Spirit give me the power to be free so when these desires come that seem to master me, and especially these areas where I've struggled over and over and over again, sometimes for years, how does the Holy Spirit help with us? Well, here I'll give you share two thoughts that I think with this. One is this, I need to learn, you need to learn, to depend on the power of the Holy Spirit. It's something we have to learn here. So let's stop for a moment. If you're with us today and if you're a Christian, you have placed your faith in Jesus as your Savior. You said, Jesus, I believe in you, and you know, and I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you've forgiven me. I have life in you. You prepared a home for me in heaven. If you're a Christian today, then you know that you believe in one God who has made himself known, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We call that the Trinity, right, in Christian faith. Uh, we get the image of the Father, our loving Heavenly Father. And it's easy to relate to the Son, because we can kind of picture Jesus as, you know, walking with us, talking with us, our friend. But sometimes the Holy Spirit, well, sometimes the Holy Spirit can be a little bit confusing, right? I mean, is he just this phantom thing? That's understandable. The Holy Spirit is actually one of the greatest gifts that God has given to us. When Jesus, this is really good to know, because we're talking about relying on the power of the Holy Spirit, so we need to understand this. When Jesus was preparing his disciples for his death and then his resurrection and so on, but here's what he's told his disciples in John chapter 16, verse 7. He said, very truly I tell you, it's for your good that I am going away. Talking about his death. And he says, unless I go, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And then Jesus said, now this is... After his death, his resurrection, he's been with his disciples, but he's getting ready to ascend back into heaven. In Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, he said this, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised, as I told you before. John, the Baptist, 
baptize you with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm gonna send you something better. I'm gonna send you the Holy Spirit. How in this, could this be better for them and for us? Well, he was saying, look, when I was with you, I was with you here. And, and yes, Jesus kind of had miraculous you know, abilities after his resurrection. He could walk and appear into a room kind of out of nowhere. But he was with his disciples just there, physically in that space. He said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he is going to come and actually indwell you. He is going to be within you, in you. And he said, that's why it's going to be good when I go. Listen, this is what you need to get. If you are a Jesus follower, if you're a Christian, the same Holy Spirit that was has been around forever, eternal, the same Holy Spirit that was there that raised Jesus from the dead, the Bible says that same Holy Spirit has been breathed into you, has given life to you. In John 14, Jesus said this, he said, I will ask the Father, he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him, but you know him because, here it is, he lives with you now and later will be in you. Wow, that is amazing that Jesus says this Holy Spirit who is with us to empower us. He's with us, but he says, but he is actually within us. He is a part of us. So what does the Holy Spirit do? Man, a lot. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. So every time we're getting ready to do something that's displeasing to God, it's the Holy Spirit that kind of gives us a check. That's just not our conscience. It's the Holy Spirit that's saying, listen, you, you need to not do that. If you're having a wrong thought, you need to, to turn away, not think about that. If you're tempted to do something you shouldn't do, stop. I mean, that's the Holy Spirit. It's almost like that the Holy Spirit, when we're walking through life, when we're starting, you know, a thought comes our, to our mind, we begin to imagine it, we think about it. Maybe we're going through that process, we want to start justifying it. The Holy Spirit is shouting there, kind of warning, stop, danger. This is going to be bad. You need to stop. That's the Holy Spirit. He's convicting us. And then another thing the Holy Spirit does, he says the Holy Spirit is one who comforts us. Have you ever been in one of those places where you're hurting, you know, you're upset, you're, you're praying, and then suddenly there's just this kind of peace that settles in, like, like we just all of a sudden, it just seems like that there's a release there. You're not exactly sure what's going on. You just know, I just have a peace that's settled into my life. You know, that's the Holy Spirit, that he's a, a comforter there. And that's what he's doing to you at that very moment. The Bible tells us the Holy Spirit is a counselor, that he will guide you and he'll guide you into what is true. And so as you're making decisions, you know, sometimes they'll say, you know, yes, do this, don't do this, go this way, don't go that way. The Holy Spirit does this through promptings and nudges. That's why it's important that we develop an intimate relationship with God so we can begin to recognize those. So you may just be having, you know, a thought, you know, should I do this? Do I trust you, God, with this? And there's just this little nudging in our spirit, you know, yes, no. I mean, there's some things in there that, that how he, he guides us. He moves us in the directions that pleases God. And then it's important to know when we talk about the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not an it. He's not some just kind of weird phantom. I mean, the scriptures say that he is a person. He is God. He is God in spirit form who is, you know, moving over his creation all around, but again, indwelling believers. So here's what this means for us. So when that temptation comes, that recurring area that you really struggle with, or a temptation that's the first time you've ever really dealt with it, but you're battling temptation. God says, you're not doing this alone. You have the power of God with you at that very moment within you, so you can endure it, and that Holy Spirit is going to show you that way of escape. Now, with the help of the Holy Spirit, get this, know this, you can overcome the desires of the flesh. You can overcome these temptations when you come your way. You can resist it, say no, and not give in to it. So we're going to learn how to depend on the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 12 tells us this. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For you, if you live by its decrees, you will die. 
Yeah. That's pretty sobering, right? <laughs> I mean, let's read this together again. I'm going to leave it on the screen. Read it out loud with me right now. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have, say it, no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. It says it's always what sin always leads to death. But that's really important what it says. Look, there's no obligation to give in to those urges, to fail again, to disappoint yourself again, you know, to, to disappoint God. There's, we, there's no, nothing that says we have to do that. We have the strength, the ability to be able to live in victory. Now, if you live by the things the Spirit, I mean, the, your, your sinful nature is telling you, do these things, it says it's going to be bad for you. There are going to be negative consequences to you, to the people you love. That's why it says you will die. It sounds pretty dramatic. When Paul wrote this, and some people said, was he just trying to scare people? That's pretty, you know, strong wording there. But now think about this. There are probably, for all of us, times when we said we were doing things that were wrong. And let's be honest, it was fun. We enjoyed it. And some of the things that we give into, we struggle with on a daily basis, we do it because it's fun. There's a pleasure that we derive from it, right? It can feel exciting. Sometimes, you know, we feel like we're doing something, you know, we're not supposed to do. And sometimes we think, you know, uh, I'm going to get away with it. Look, nobody even knows about it. Even, you know, God didn't really do anything about it. You know, I just seemed like I, I, I did it and, and, and no consequence at all. But then we know what can happen. You know, there are a couple of phrases that I've heard throughout my life that, that, you know, are true. It says, at first sin thrills and then it kills. Uh, another one I've heard is, you know, sin fascinates and then it assassinates. Because we know that there are times when we say, I was doing something, it didn't seem like it was any big deal, but I derived some kind of pleasure, something because it was risky or something like that, I'm not getting caught. And then all of a sudden, everything, everything just collapsed. And then the consequences came. You've lived with things like that. You know what I'm talking about then. When we give into that temptation and so on, we're feeding the flesh, it begins to grow. And sin, the Bible says it entangles us. We get trapped in it. You know, our secrets begin to unravel. You know, we're caught. Other people that you thought would never know about it do hear about it. And then it can destroy. And you maybe live with that. Maybe you've seen other people live with Our marriage is destroyed. You know, intimacy is destroyed. Uh, a reputation, a family. Uh, for some people, it's a career. You know, they're let go from a job. For some people, it's like I just ruined and sabotaged my whole future. Uh, your finances, your health. I mean, those are all realities. And you know that. You know what I'm talking about. Even things that seem like they could be so small. But as you play them on out, the consequences can be so huge. So if you live doing whatever the sinful nature dictates and says, do this, it says the consequence is going to be bad. It's going to lead to the death of something. But again, let's look at the whole verse. Because it says we don't have an obligation to do what our sinful nature desires. The good news is, Romans 8, 13. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. So leave it on the screen. Let's read it together. Say it with me out loud. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. You can't. It's not through your power, because we can't. I can't. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit living in us. And if you're a Christian, God's Spirit is in you. That power is in you. If through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the sinful nature, you starve it. You don't feed it. He says, if you do that, then that thing is going to die. The, the grip it has on you is going to be released. And you're going to be free. You're going to live. The victory that God gives us. Now, here's the second key thought I'll share in this, this whole thing. All right. So the first thought was like, you know, whatever you feed grows, whatever you starve, you know, dies. Here's the second one. Follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit. All right. Kind of, so kind of number one, right? They depend on the Spirit's power. Number two, follow the Spirit's promptings. All right. Um, Galatians 5.24 says, those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. You know, and, and we, we know it says, what, what have those who belong to Jesus done? You know, they have nailed their passions, these desires, these things that tug on us. They, they nailed these to the cross with Jesus. It's a powerful picture. 
You know, sometimes I picture me writing the areas where I really struggle, the sinful areas of my life where I struggle. And I take him to the cross, literally. And we've done this in, you know, in person here in worship. We've had cards and people write their sin struggles on them. And then we nail those to the cross and say, Jesus has paid for those. He's not only forgiven me for it, but it's also saying now it's through the cross, through his death, his resurrection, through his power that we can have victory over those things. We're putting them to death. And then look at this next verse, Galatians 5, 25. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. We say, you know, God, I want, I want to live in intimacy with you. I want to walk with you. And so now I want to follow your leading. We're going to walk by the Spirit's power and leading because when I do that, I'm not going to go to places that are going to cause me to be tempted and give in to sin. And with the Spirit's help, I'm not going to give in to those areas where I struggle. Now, there are those of us today, this is going to be a true thing. There will be some today who are part of this online gathering who are going to tap into the power of the Holy Spirit because you're saying, I am so tired of this struggle. I am so tired of giving into this sin. I am so tired of the failing and the consequences and everything. I, I am done with it, but God, I can't do it on my own, but I can, with the help of your Holy Spirit, have some victory. And what you're going to do is you're going to say, I believe the promises of God. And God, with the help of your Holy Spirit, I want to put to death. I want to starve that thing that is slowly killing me. And maybe that's the prayer that really is being reflected in your own heart today. God, I just want victory over this. And, and there are those who are going to tap into this power of the Holy Spirit and say, God, I cannot do it on my own, but with your power, I can and maybe that's exactly where you are today. I'm going to put a prayer. This is just a sample prayer up on the screen. Now look at the words of it. Heavenly Father, I admit that I am powerless over blank. And you fill in the blank. What, what is that area where you said, this is where I get tripped up all the time. I admit I'm powerless over blank. Yet I believe that your Holy Spirit has power to give me victory over this sin. I believe you will now help me to put this sin to death. I ask you to do this work in me now. You know, it starts with when we acknowledge, when we name the sin, this is, this is the area, Lord, I am powerless. This is, this is my struggle. And when we admit that we are powerless over something, what we're saying is, in order to have victory, I need a greater power. And that's where we say, God, now that's why I'm coming to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to help me to be whole, to be healed, to be knowing forgiven, to be free. So I'm going to admit I'm powerless, but I want to believe in God's power. And what I want to do today is to give time for you to respond to that, just a few moments, for you to really ponder is there an area in my life where I say, God, I just want victory in this. I really do. And do you believe that through what Christ has done on the cross, that we can put to death that area where we, we struggle? God, you can give me the ability to resist. I can starve it. It's going to die away. And I'm going to be free from this. And what I want you to do is to take the next you know, couple of minutes. I'll just give you some quiet time here on the screen and use it for your own personal time of prayer. I'm going to put that prayer that we had up on the kind of the script there on the screen again. And if that reflects your heart, then you make it your prayer. And I'll be back in just a moment.
Now, maybe as you're praying, you're saying, I'm admitting I'm powerless. And you're saying, Holy Spirit, I, I, I come to you and ask that you would give me victory. Whatever's in your blank. Admit I'm powerless over materialism. I'm powerless over worry. I'm powerless over lust. I'm, I'm powerless, Lord, over this thing. I admit it to you, I bring it to you, and I cry out to you today. God, do a work in my heart. Give me victory. I want to tell you that God is faithful to his word. You can see there's this consistent message that God has given us over the last few weeks and today. Yes, we're all going to be tempted, but that temptation does not have the power over us. We don't have to give in to it for a Christian. I can't resist it in my own strength because in my own strength I'm, I'm weak and quite honestly I get satisfaction from giving in to that. But I know that it's hard for I know it's going to bring death to something, something I love. And what God is telling us is through the Holy Spirit, I'll not only show you the, a way of escape, I'll give you the power to be able to resist. So you can just simply say no. When you hear this, the Spirit prompting, stop, warning, don't go there. Run away from this. You can do it. And as you starve that, I am not going to gratify the things in my flesh. I'm not going to give in and do that. Even though I've done it a hundred times, I'm not going to. You admit, Holy Spirit, I'm powerless, but you are powerful. And when you begin instead to walk in the Spirit, you begin to feed your spirit, you begin to grow in your intimacy with God, then you're going to find more and more you're going to have a victory. All right? That's what God promises us. We're going to close our service with a, a song that really is a kind of a, a song about the Holy Spirit's work in our life. It's a song that's been around in the church for a long time. Now, wherever you find yourself right now, I just want you to make this a continued part of your prayer. You just simply say, Holy Spirit, come and pour yourself out of my life and fill me with your power because I, I need your power to live. Let's, let's share this song together. I'll come back with some closing words in just a few moments. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. We welcome you to fall fresh on us. Fresh wind. A fresh touch from you. Fresh eyes to see. New ears to hear. Sweep over us this morning. Holy Spirit, envelop us this morning. Fresh. 
Well, I want to thank you for being a part of the service, but my thanks goes a lot deeper. I want to thank you for each of you that are saying, God, do a work in my life today. I mean, I think this could be one of those life-changing days. You're going to look back and if you were participating in this online service the day that we premiered it, you know, on February 12th, 2023, you're going to say that day, that day marked the day where God gave me victory, victory over that area where you have struggled for so long. And not only the victory over just this one sin, but now as you begin to walk in intimacy with God, as you walk in the Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit, you're gonna find victory in more and more and more areas. You're gonna see you know, your own personal life fulfilled. You're gonna see if you're married, you know, marriage is relationships strengthened. You're gonna see the, the benefit into families. I mean, it's just this way as the Holy Spirit guides us the way that He wants us to go. That's, that's a life that is full of really, you know, the abundance in, in him. Now, I, I mean this, I say this, I hope you'll do it. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear, you know, you don't have to say, hey, I was praying for victory over and you named the sin area. You don't have to do that. But I would love it if you would say, Scott, I just want you to know that I was trusting God to help me. And I'm praying for the work of the Holy Spirit, you know, power in my life today. Again, you can send us that. You can do it through the connection card. Link's over here on the right side of your screen. If you have that chat, if you're there, just click the link. Wait, again, I'm going to put the QR code up. You know, even if you don't want to fill this out right now, get your phone out. Just, you know, take a quick, you know, scan of that code. You can, you, you know, pull that up, you know, at any time you want. You can always email me directly. I'm giving you every kind of way, right? Every person possible way. My email address is just Pastor Scott at FerndaleFMC.com. I would just love to hear from you what God's doing in your life, to pray along with you, and especially as you have some victory, man, share that good news back, you know, with, with me so we can be encouraged together. God is giving victory, and he helps us. Well, it's been good for, to be with you. I've enjoyed this service. I've enjoyed what God's teaching and what he's, you know, even speaking in my own life. I hope you'll be back with us again next week. We have one more message in this about living in the fullness, the power, the victory of the Holy Spirit. I think, think you're going to find it very helpful and meaningful. So I look forward to you joining us then. Until then, man, walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit where He leads. Walk in the Spirit with His power. And you're going to find you're going to live a life that honors God. It's freeing to you, freeing to you, and full you know, of the adventure of what God has created you and who He's created you to be. Have a great day. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.